Hi everyone. Um, back after my last stream where I made where I used the melting pot um, and duty to make some elements for a journal cover and I'm just creating the journal cover at the moment. So I've started off with a piece of chipboard that's um, seven and a half by five and a half inches. And what I'm doing now is creating a 3 8 inch border all around because I'm going to add some strips under that. So just measuring up there and drawing and why I left all that measurement measuring in I had no idea but there it is. So we really will be only working on that centre section. And what I actually did was I did that and cut the centre piece out. But you don't have to. What I did, because I wanted one full piece to add the extra strips onto. So you could just add the strips if you wanted to. So what I'm doing here now is cutting out the centre, but I've told you not to. But if you do, then you'll need another piece for your cover. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to add some drywall tape as a texture stencil. Now you could use anything here. Um, one of the ladies suggested I use um, like a wood grain because one of the um, pieces I used was a woodland spirit and, and it was in a citrine um colored beauty so that would look nice against like a wood bark background so i'm going to use that in another stream coming up and i'm just going to have a um selection of um, journal covers to choose from when i complete a journal but the whole point of the exercise on last stream was to use it or lose it and I hadn't used my um, melting pot for so long. So now I'm just using um, some heavy gesso here because I didn't want it too hard like texture paste but you know you can use what you want it was hard anyway once it dried so I masked it off so that I could just do it in sections. and wiping off any excess that went over the edge of it there. And you'll notice that with this piece, um, I actually used the center piece, but I did another one and used the larger piece where I didn't cut out the center and just marked off the edges. I think I'll show that later on. I hope so anyway. Now this is called purple tape I think and I don't know where I got it from but gee I love it. It does not rip anything off the surface after you apply it so I'll have to see where I got that from. So there's the second lot of um, texture circles. It's just the background, it's just something for a bit of interest where you normally just have a plain background and build up on it. Well, we started with the building up first. So now I've done the three sections, cleaning off the edges. Not exact, but texture is texture. Now I used a Tim Holtz, I think it was hanging sign die and cut out a piece of that from chipboard. So I'm going to hang my UT um, woodland spirit that I made hanging from that sign. Easier said than done, which is when you'll see that later. So that was just a bit too wide. You'll see now I haven't added anything onto that piece there, but I did not put any um, texture paste 
texture paste on the edges. I'd mask that off and I'm just cutting this down, this die cut piece so it fits in there nicely. And that was just a piece of um, cardstock that I traced over around the um, Woodland Spirit um, UD piece. Um, which you could use for a mask. Uh, I just put some liquid gesso all over that piece. Now and you'll see there I've added a hole and that's where you want to put a hole if you want your closure. But in the end I used another um, closure piece and I didn't need a hole. So, And I cut another piece there and I was going to use that on the page but no, it didn't fit. I also used the... Um, dream word die and these are so difficult to remove from the die but it was a tore a bit in that but that's okay it's grunge so it worked it did its job and i'm going to cut that down to size so that it fits within those borders now you could use um, if you've got some moulds that you silicon moulds, mind you, because UD is very hot, so you couldn't use anything other than silicon, I wouldn't think. Um, and if you have an alphabet, and you could use those letters for whatever word you wanted to make. Or, as I did in my last stream um, with the UD and melting pot. I stamped my rubber stamp into the melted UT and that can work a treat. So there's all sorts of ways you can put words on your um, cover. So just gessoing this. And that's the piece I used um, and created with clear UT. which we will paint further down the track. It's a fairly long video, sorry, but I think this took over three days for me to want to make. So there, what I'd done was I cut out that centerpiece and then I cut out two three eighths by seven and a half inches and two four and th no. Yeah, four and three quarter inch by three eighth inch strips and adhered them with some Aileen's tacky glue so it's dimensional. Now I'm just cutting it down to size. Happy with that. I may not have stuck the strips on there yet. And see, so I've noted up the top, it was top front which ends up being the top back because I didn't want the slits of the joins of the um, strips so here I am now sorry adhering the strips onto this piece and that UD because I hadn't used it for oh, three years it's a bit thicker than it normally is I think but it was hard to get out of that um, tube so I ended up um, scraping it out or using the um, Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive and using um, Bulldog Clips there to adhere, well just to make it um, stick so you see here, these are the strips, so obviously there's going to a slit between the top and the sides. So I want that turned over so it's a full rectangle with no slits cut in it. why you need to see the whole lot it's beyond me but anyway 
Okay, put that aside. No, we did. It dried, and now we're back, and we're gessoing it. Now that'll be put aside for a while. Here comes the melting pot. Now I did show on this stream, this um, video, melting some beauty for the letters that I used. So this was blue iris and I sprinkled in some bronze beauty powder as well um, and swirled it around when it was melted and then when it was poured out it had flecks of the bronze within the blue and I really loved that. go and I went overboard like they're very um, shallow molds so um, I think one at a time and scrape the top off so it's nice and even the letters are on the underneath anyway shown here um, so I didn't slice off the excess UD but when I adhered it to the page, I adhered it with texture paste, so um, you don't tell anyway. And I'm just trying to use it all up. I can get the scraper out and use it, but doing that, it brings the heap out. And I uh, only having so many hands, it's a bit difficult. So these have dried. They don't take long, or set, I guess, and they'll have little um, bits and pieces which just snap off anyway, or you can cut them off. And once you've used that UD and poured it into the mould, and that if you didn't like how it came out, that's the letter A there then you can just put those pieces back in, remelt them and try again. That's the beauty of UD and the melting pot. I love it. So here I'm just cutting the ends off. And the other letters I just put in a bag, the same bag that my mould um, is kept in, so that when I go to use it again I'll know I've got some letters and I can use some complementary colours of the UD that goes with them or try and replicate what I've used. So I'm just putting these bits that I'm cutting off back into the melting pot and I'll re-melt um, that and then pour it out onto my craft mat and scrape it out as much as I can and once that dries I can just plop that into the plastic bag too. Okay, so this is fairly much, pretty much my layout, um, start to finish. I didn't change anything of it at all, just add the closure piece, which you don't see here. Right, so now we're going to paint the um, background chipboard piece, and I've dipped my brush into Mars Black and Prussian Blue Hue love Prussian blue hue. It's one of my fave colours. And I'm looking at it here now and I can't even see the black or the Prussian blue because I do come along and do some sprays after it. So doing the same colours to the frame. While I've got them out, I'm wet. A lot of my layers tend to get lost underneath because I don't know when to stop. 
but I'd rather see the black coming through than white. All right, one of my fave paints here is Lumiere's. So I've got a grape and a citrine metallic acrylic paints. They're so pretty. And looking at my piece now, I guess the darker areas would be the purple and the um, lighter areas, the green, which when I apply the sprays over it, comes sort of through in that way. But you can't really see the purple and you can't really see the citrine. So now here are the sprays. I've got some Lindy's sprays. The first one was a, the Buccaneer Blue Buccany Bay Blue. Um, it was the Moon Shadow Mist. And then the other one was Sassy Sapphire and it's a Starburst Spray. That's dried. Now I want to add some Magicals. And this is Guten Tag Teal. Love this colour. And I was going to just paint directly over it but I thought no I better put some spray some water on it. So I did that and then added the gold, metallic gold, Lumiere's paint. And notice I'm not concentrating much on the edges because the board is going over that. Alright, now on to the hanging sign and I'm base coating it with some raw umber acrylic paint <laughs> yeah. this is one step I went over the mark I just added and added and added and there was one part of it um, here where I thought that's it you know but no I went further so on the dream side I'm using the Prussian blue and the black Was it the black or it might have been the raw rumba? Can't remember now. Right, I get out my Inca Golds and um they say they're a metal gloss paint, but yet you rub them on like a um, a wax. But anyway, that one stayed nice and um, fresh, the turquoise. But then all the others were very, very hard. I could still get some out. This one was the graphite. This is the copper and it was very hard as well but I could still get some out. And see I think that looks good as it is. And I should have left it there. And here's the Nouveau embellishment mousse and it had all dried up and I couldn't use that at all. Um, so another one I had here was, I think it was Antique Red, yeah, and I didn't like that once it went on. But I continue to add more and more to it. Um, I'm just adding a bit to the Dream one down there, but I think I'll go over that because I didn't like it. Yeah, went back over it with the turquoise. Yep, trying to dull down that red with some graphite. Okay, see, I'd spilled it everywhere. And this was after spilling. Well, I had the um, fired brick distress paint. It was closed, screwed tight, and walked away, came back, the lid was on it but it wasn't screwed and I went to shake it up 
without holding the top. Well, it went everywhere. And this is red rust. So I'm I'm just determined that I can't. I've just realised I can't use red. I don't like it. I call it stinking red. And that's the reason why I think because if I'm going to spill anything on me, it's going to be stinking red. So I put that on the hanging sign and just um, bits and pieces of it on the um, dream sign. Yeah, it still fits, Jen. Oh, this was a nightmare. I was trying to heat the pick with my heat gun so that it would go through and make a hole. Now I think it's best to do this when the piece is still warm, not quite set. Cause see, it snapped. That's okay, it snapped off in two pieces, which wasn't too bad. The other side has succeeded, so I was very, I was more careful with that one. Um, but maybe I should have just given up and put something there that looked like it was had gone through an aisle, um, jump ring. Anyway, I hate it down first and try and join it, but that didn't quite work when I started to put the, um, jump ring in it so I end up getting the um, glossy accents but first I'm going to find a size of jump ring to fit the um, hanging sign first and a piece of chain and I didn't have the color I wanted um, of chain I've got mostly silver there or bright gold and I want it rusty so I got out a gold chain And I brought out the um, range of Tim Holtz um, patinas in clay. And what was the other one? Onyx, Onyx, I think. So I waited it dried a bit there before I um, then put it through the Onyx patina which is a metallic, well it's a liquid for metallics. Didn't want to cover it in the black, but I wanted some on there. Yeah, and that worked fairly well. I like that then. So here I go fumble fingers with the jump rings and the pliers pointy nose and trying to thread it through the holes well they're alright up the top the um, hanging sign I make it look difficult though well, that went through fine now I've got to find the length that I need and then cut that off um, but I do need larger jump rings so I've just grabbed some Tim Holtz jump rings there and I ended up getting this one in fine without breaking any part of that um, mould It was the other side that I had issues with. Yep, so now I cut it down and joined it onto that jump ring. The left side done. Almost. I'm not a jewellery maker. Okay, so that's done. Now the drama with the other one. Right, 
Alright, so I've got it through the hanging sign and I'm just trying to attach it to the mould using glossy accents. And in the end I realised that it's easier to just open up the jump ring straight, sit it there, hold it for a while, let it seal, and um, then twist it into the um, chain. But I never, ever, ever give up. There's always a way to fix things, especially in grunge. Yep, just sits there nicely like that, so I'm just going to... There we go. Sit there and hold it for a while. No, we're back at it. Oh, oh it dried there, so I'm just going to put it into that little area there. Just because of the curve in it. Anyway, I get there in the end. Sorry, off screen. I get carried away. Forget to look at the camera. See where I'm showing. Okay. And it finally stuck. So now it's time to um, commit and adhere all the elements with some texture paste. And I was so messy with this. So it took me a long time to try and clean up the mess that I made with them. See, all that texture paste. It does dry clear in the end, but best to take off as much as you can because it's covering the um, texture of the background there so I try using the um, palette knife but I get out the um, mm, another tool shall we say can't remember the name of it so this mold you might have saw that um, it wasn't completely full when I made this and that's okay I just filled it up with texture paste and you don't see the back so all good and this was just a piece I had in my stash for my closure I will put a um oh what do you call those pins lobster clasp through that from the back page to the front when I create the cover, complete cover of a journal. Oh, the dream. This was hard to, because there's so many holes in there. It went everywhere. But it looks quite nice on the finished product. So, worked out all right. Don't stress, Jen. And I have not adhered that um, rectangle frame as yet. Just using it as a guide. I'm getting texture paste all over it too. <laughs> so yeah. Can't remember what they're called. The ones with the little balls on the end. Oh. Isn't that terrible? Anyway, it's doing the trick. Oh, and there are, there are those letters. So I'm applying those with some texture paste as well. And they weren't straight on the back. So um, they're fine. You don't realise that. You don't see it. Adds a bit of depth and texture so 
so there it is, raw, pretty much, until I start getting rid of all that texture paste and colouring it up a bit. Yeah, there are the jump rings. Okay, now I'm going to work on the frame. So I'm using a Tim Holtz Crocodile layering stencil and I'm just masking the section off that I want with the purple tape and I will use some texture paste over that. Making sure, now you see here on the top right hand corner there there's the um, crack where I've joined the top to the base of the frame. So I take this off in a second and turn it over so there's none of that. Yeah, get it all lined up and then I realise, which is good because I realised before I started putting on the texture paste. So there you'll see there's no cracks in it, no splits. I'll just use the centerpiece of that for a smaller journal cover. Yeah, just wiping off the excess um, from the edges there. Yep, done the same to the other side. Now the top and bottom, once those sides are dry-ish. No patience here. Even though it took me three days for this video, this project. Okay. Okay, that's done. Put it aside to dry. Now we're going to paint that woodland um, spirit piece that I created using the Beauty in the Melting Pot and I'm just colouring it or painting it with um, Mars Black acrylic paint. making sure I get in all the crevices as well. Doesn't matter if I slop any off on the background there. <laughs> Rough enough's good enough, Jen. Alright, now I'm going in with a um, smaller brush and going through all the sections that I haven't um, covered with that black paint. I'm still trying to clean off this texture paste. It's really bugging me. But you can see it's coming off okay. I'm actually painting now um, around the edges and colouring the um, texture paste with the black. Looks quite messy at the moment but it does end up being pretty darn good if I must say so. I'm happy with it. Oh, we got the red paste again. Rust paste. Oh, just covering those texture paste areas on there. 
See? I should not have even painted it in the first place. Wasted my time and product. Oh well. You know what? I'm going to work on the dream. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I was going to just go around the sides, insides and edges of this sign. But in the end, I must have went a bit too far. And so I thought, just cull the whole lot in. Yeah. They got a bit messy, so I thought, yep, just cover it all in paint. Made it stand out a bit more anyway, I think. Put a bit on the um, lion closure piece. Right, now I've got some silks. Mandy gave me these because I don't think I've ever bought silks. Just adding a bit of water to it because it was fairly gluggy. Mixing it up. Oh, dropped a bit. Right, going to paint some of the leaves with this colour. pretty colour actually and it sort of it doesn't blend in but it does match the um, background there I thought now going in with some pearl turquoise in the Lumiere's paints. Love their paints. So pretty. Um, I think it's citrine, um, this colour, it's the Lumiere. So three different colours there. Did I even put some gold in there? Can't remember. I don't think so. Maybe. Now I'm going to paint the face with the uh, metallic gold in the Lumiere's paint. Sort of goes on a bit streaky. Never realised that before. It might be the surface as well. But the paints, the other paints went on fine. I think I'd do a couple of coats of that anyway. So getting that, um, I think that's the Inca Gold Turquoise. Just going over some high points on that hanging sign. Ah, now this is brown rust effect paste. Adding it to the sign. How many colours have I added to that hanging sign? Don't answer that. <laughs> Treasure gold. This is so good. It's still as good as it was when I first bought it. It's the white fire love it um, 
What's it? What is it? Is it a wax guild or something? Um, don't know. Anyway, these I've never tried, I don't think. And I'm trying to work out how to use them, what I do. Do I spray water on it? But apparently there's a um, light film over the top which you take off. And this is just a jet black. And it's a... Uh, what was it? A stencil cream or something? Yeah. Weird. Australian. No, I think it was Australian. Don't know. So another colour added to the hanging sign. Oh, going over and giving the face another coat of that metallic gold. So yeah, it just does not want to stick too much, too well. All right, well we're onto the frame now, and we're doing the Lumiere pearl turquoise paint. This is the first layer over these this crocodile stencil, the texture paste. So pretty that colour. Now we're going to add some of the metallic gold, just here and there. Now I think that looks quite pretty. It 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 sort of frames it the lighter colours and then I go in with the graphite and darken it as Jen does. It looks quite effective, I think. Camera's not focusing too well, going too fast. Alright, that's the frame done. Now I'm going to try this Aileen's Tacky Glue again. So I've taken the lid off and just um, scooping it out there. And see, I should have probably done this after about 24 hours, once the um, texture paste had dried completely. Because when I put the bulldog clips on this to adhere it to the um, cover, and then I take them off, you can see all the marks where the bulldog clips were. That's okay, it's all texture. Still trying to take that um, excess texture paste away. Also, um, the glue from the edges where it's seeped out. All right. Is that about it? Yeah, I think I'm happy with it. Hmm. Took long enough. But I can't wait now to um, create the journal cover and journal. Oh, well, you know, the whole spine and back cover and that. Um, yeah. But I can't use it 
until I've completed a journal. So I'll best make one quick because I don't know that I've got one that size. So anyway, let me know if you guys have created any projects from our, from my last stream where we used the melting pot um, and post them either to Twitter, tag me at Aussie Green, or on Facebook. I have a um, techniques page there, journal techniques. So um, I'd love to see what you've done with your um, UD moulds. And don't know what we're going to need to um, use next week, but we're going to use it or lose it. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Um, please subscribe if you haven't yet and leave a comment down below. Press the like button and I'll see you next week. Bye.